Here's the universal cur curette. A round at back, two cutting edges per working end, a round at toe. The face of the curette is perpendicular to the lower shank so that the cutting edges are level with one another. The face of the curette is divided into three sections, the toe or lower third, the middle third, and the heel or upper third. The universal curette has two edges, an inner cutting edge and an outer cutting edge. To identify the edges, cutting edges, hold the instrument so that you are looking at the face of the working end. The outer cutting edge is the one that is farther from the instrument handle. The inner cutting edge is the edge closer to the instrument handle. To determine which working end is cor correct, place the curette next to the tooth you wish to scale with the toe pointed in the direction in the mesial direction. Notice the terminal shank is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. This is the correct working end. This is the incorrect working end. Adaptation of the curette is placing the first one or two millimeters, the lower third, of the side of the toe in contact with the tooth. This is correct adaptation. This is, in this is incorrect. Notice the middle third of the working end is in contact with the tooth. Angulation of the curette is the angle formed between the face of the instrument and the tooth surface. For insertion beneath the gingival margin, the face to tooth surface angulation be should be between 0 and 40 degrees. To close the angle, lean the handle toward the surface you are working on so the face of the curette is almost against the tooth. To open the angle, lean the handle away from the tooth so more the cutting edge is in contact with the tooth. For insertion beneath the gingival margin into the sulcus or pocket, the working end is inserted with a closed angulation of 0 to 40 degrees. Position the working end with the toe pointed toward the gingival margin. Keeping the face as close to the tooth surface as possible, slide the toe beneath the gingival margin. For calculus removal, it is vital to establish a correct angle between the instrument and the tooth surface. Angulation for calculus removal is an angle of greater than 45 degrees and less than 90 degrees. The universal curette can be applied to all tooth surface in both the anterior and posterior sextants of the mouth. First we'll demonstrate on the posterior sextant. Hold the instrument in a modified pen grasp. Establish a safe, comfortable fulcrum next to the working area. Begin with the last molar in the sextant. The distal surface is complete at first, beginning at the distal facial line angle and working onto the distal surface. Insert the working end beneath the gingival margin with the toe tipped toward the gingival margin and the face of the curette in a closed position. Adapt the cutting edge uh, to the mesial of the distal facial line angle. The toes should aim toward the back of the mouth because this is the direction in which you are working. Open the face. Check that the terminal shank is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. With a wrist rocking motion, work at least halfway across the distal surface from the facial aspect, keeping your cutting edge adapted to the tooth at all times. You are now ready to instrument the facial and mesial surfaces of the tooth. While maintaining your fulcrum, lift the working end away from the tooth and turn it so that it aims toward the front of the mouth in the mesial direction. Reposition the working end at the distal facial line angle with the toe, toe aiming forward. Reinsert the working end in a closed position. Open the face and check that the terminal shank is parallel. Using a wrist rocking motion, work along the facial surface. When you get to the mesial facial line angle, roll the instrument and pivot on your fulcrum to readapt the toe third of the cutting edge to the mesial surface. 
work at least halfway across the mesial surface from the facial aspect. Do we have to read? I do did it? everything way too fast. Okay. Using the universal curette on the anterior sextant, only the outer cutting edges are used. The face of the working end should tilt toward the tooth surface. The lower shank reaches across the tooth surface. Think anterior across. Another visual clue is the handle of the 3-4 universal curette is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. This is the correct cutting edge. This is incorrect. Begin instrumenting the mesial half of the maxillary right canine from the facial aspect. If you're right-handed, this is the surface away from you. If you're left-handed, this is the surface toward you. Okay, gently insert the working end beneath the gingival margin with a closed 0 to 40 degree angle. Close the face by tilting the lower shank toward the tooth. Be sure the toe is starting at the midline of the tooth. Open the face. With a wrist rocking motion, continue overlapping strokes to the proximal surface. Roll the instrument handle and pivot on your fulcrum to maintain adaptation of the toe third of the working end. Continue to the next tooth until all surfaces toward you are completed. Okay, change your seating position for surfaces away from the back position. S starting at the midline of the tooth, complete all surfaces away. Check that all visual clues are correct. Is the terminal shank across the tooth surface? Is the handle parallel? Is the toe third adapted correctly? Is the toe starting at the midline of the tooth surface? Overview. Main purpose is to remove supergingival medium to hard deposits on posterior teeth. The sharp pointed tip helps you access fine deposits under the contact area. Grasp. Modified pin grasp. Adaptation. Lower one third of the cutting edge. This is very important since a posterior sickle has two cutting edges. Stroke, moderate to firm lateral pressure, short pull stroke, a calculus removing stroke. Working angulation, 70 to 80 degrees. The design of the posterior sickle we are using has two working ends, each with two cutting edges. An inner cutting edge to instrument distal surfaces and an outer cutting edge to instrument the mesial surfaces. 
It has a lower shank that will be parallel to the proximal surface you are instrumenting and a functional shank that goes up and over the tooth. Once you've positioned yourself, your patient, and the light, hold the posterior sickle with a modified pin grasp. Begin with the mandibular right posterior most tooth in the sextant. Establish your fulcrum, also called finger rest, on the adjacent teeth mesial to your work site. The tip of the instrument should be aimed toward the distal surface. Tilt the lower shank toward the distal surface until the instrument to tooth surface angulation is between 70 and 80 degrees. Maintain adaptation of the tip third of the cutting edge to the tooth surface. Before initiating a calculus removal stroke, press down with your fulcrum finger and apply pressure against the instrument handle with the index finger and thumb to create lateral pressure against the tooth surface. Use a short pull stroke. Complete the distal surface at least halfway across the distal. The other half will be instrumented from the lingual aspect. You are now ready to instrument the mesial surfaces of the tooth. While maintaining your fulcrum, lift the working end away from the tooth and turn it so that it aims towards the front of the mouth. Reposition the working end at the mesiofacial line angle. Tilt the lower shank slightly towards the mesial surface to maintain correct angulation. Work at least halfway across the mesial surface from the facial aspect. The other half will be instrumented from the lingual aspect. Always bring the sickle instrument to the contact before removing. Relax your fingers between each stroke. Continue on the sextant, working towards the front of the mouth, completing the facial aspect of the entire sextant. Lingual surfaces would be scaled in the same manner. Do not instrument root surfaces with a sickle scaler. Instrument, anterior sickle, left-handed instructions. Overview. The main purpose is to remove supragingival medium to hard deposits on anterior teeth. The sharp pointed tip helps you access fine deposits under the contact area. Grasp, modified pin grasp. Adaptation, the lower one-third of the cutting edge. This is very important since the anterior sickle has two cutting edges. Stroke, moderate to firm lateral pressure, short pull stroke, a calculus removing stroke. Working angulation, 70 to 80 degrees. The design of the anterior sickle we are using has a bend in the lower shank, giving it an offset angle. When scaling surfaces toward you, the bend is away from you. When scaling surfaces away from you, the bend is toward you. Once you've positioned yourself, your patient, and light, hold the anterior sickle with a modified pin grasp. Left-handed clinicians will start on the mesiofacial line angle of the lower right canine. With the anterior sickle, you scale all surfaces towards you first. Remember, the bend of the lower shank is away from you. Establish your fulcrum, 
also called finger rest, on the incisal surfaces of the lower left premolars, keeping your fulcrum as close to your working area as possible. The tip of the instrument should be aimed toward the mesial surface. Tilt the lower shank slightly toward the tooth surface to establish correct instrument to tooth surface angulation, about 70 to 80 degrees. Maintain adaptation of the tip one-third of the cutting edge to the tooth surface. Roll the instrument handle slightly between strokes to maintain adaptation. Before initiating a calculus removing stroke, press down with your fulcrum finger and apply pressure against the instrument handle with the index finger and thumb to create lateral pressure. Begin the pull stroke using wrist motion activation. Continue strokes until you work at least halfway across the mesial surface. The other half of the mesial surface will be instrumented from the lingual aspect of the tooth. Relax your fingers between each stroke. Continue on all surfaces towards you, ending on the left canine. Change your clock position and working end of the instrument and complete the remaining facial surfaces away from you, beginning with the left canine and ending with the right canine. Remember the bend of the lower shank is toward you now.